Welcome, welcome. I am so excited, everyone. This is our next edition of the Healer's Wisdom Trade Show. We're so grateful that you've come to join us. And I am beyond honored and just feel so privileged to introduce to you one of my dearest friends and favorite people, Jennifer Owens. Uh, today, she's gonna to be talking about Tantra, an exploration of the courage of self-awareness and true liberation. This is such a juicy topic. And really, as we were kind of brainstorming into this, it's, I think, so relevant for the time. So I'm so excited that you're here with us. And my name is Dr. Simone Resner. Now, Jennifer Lauren is the founder of Shunya Gates Temple. She's a certified tantric counselor and her work helps one live and move in accordance with their unique constitution and true nature. She offers one-on-one -on -one couple and couple sessions, workshops, and does facilitation for ceremonies. And so if you want to connect with her, I will be giving you information about how to do so throughout this, as well as at the end. And I highly recommend that you seek out her services. It's life changing to be able to do a session with Jen. I've known her for so long. And she's been doing this whole journey of hers for over 12 years as an immersion into mysticism and the spiritual arts, and has studied with a number of renowned teachers. I am so, so excited for you to tell us what Tantra is because <laughs> you come from a very specific and beautiful lineage. I, I know one of your teachers, Sean Roop, and he's literally one of my favorite teachers. And excuse me, I'm just admitting some people in. Welcome, Stephen. Um, you know, Sean Roop is just one of my favorite Tantra teachers and I've been around the world doing the whole Tantra thing as well. And so, you know, I have so much respect for your lineage and what you offer through Tantra. And since Stephen just joined us, we're, we're going into what is Tantra? Thank you so much, Simone. Um, thank you for having me. It's really an honor and a joy. Um, and you're also one of my absolute favorite people and um, very often a teacher. So thanks for having me here. <laughs> um, so what is Tantra? Um, you mentioned lineage um, and Tantra is, a, it's an ancient wisdom lineage. And through this lineage, um, Tantra is offering us tools and insight for a deeper relationship to self, to life, and ultimately to source. Um, it's also a system that gives us the understanding of the seamless nature of those three things. Mm -hmm. So our relationship to self, life and source, then really being so deeply interwoven um, and being kind of, each is its access to the other. The Tantra is also a pathway back to our own deeper knowing um, and to our, our true self, our essence. Um, you kind of read it in the bio, but the, the to our true nature, it's a pathway back to that so that we can make contact with our true nature and live from there. So important. Yeah. Yeah. And um, sometimes people say, well, okay, I, I kind of get it, but can you tell me more? Um, I will say uh, that Tantra uses um, a number of kind of methodologies mediums to connect with energy and to bring us into relationship with different aspects of ourself and with the universe um, and with each other. Mm -hmm. Some of those modalities that you'll find in Tantra is using mantra or chanting. So using sound and vibration, um, you'll find tools to unfold what's going on with yourself. Um, so we might, we'll, we might dabble in that a little bit today. We'll, we'll see. Um, <laughs> And uh, meditation is a big part of Tantra. Mudra, um, which is kind of creating energetic um, access points with our hands. Um, also, Tantra uses um, symbology and ritual. Um, and also Tantra is a, um, has a deep, appreciation for what resides in spaciousness and silence, mm -hmm. um, beingness. 
Um, so that's that, that in itself is a whole piece. But I just wanted to give a couple, um, a, a little bit of information about ta what Tantra might look like if you're practicing Tantra. Um, and it wouldn't be complete if I didn't acknowledge that for many, um, many people correlate Tantra with sacred sexuality. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would say that most people have this idea that that is what Tantra is, right? And so I'm so glad that we're going into the wider umbrella of Tantra, not to, you know, say sacred sexuality isn't worthy of our attention, but it's so beautiful to also expand into the bigger aspect of what it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the doorway I came through was the doorway into Tantra was the the beingness, the connect, the relationship to self. Um, you mentioned one of my original and primary teachers, Sean Roop. Um, he's a lineage holder for Mahamudra. And that's also been my primary line, lineage, which is really around beingness. What does Mahamudra uh, mean again? It's kind of profound, right? And how it translates? <laughs> it's kind of profound. <laughs> um, yeah, so Maha Mudra, when it translates um, a few different ways since we're translating it from Sanskrit, um, but the translation that resonates most with me is the great becoming. Mm. Uh, so uh, another way that you'll hear it is like the, the great orgasm, but not orgasm in terms of a sexual sense, um, but that the, the coming together, um, kind of that explosion of energy that led to beingness mm -hmm. um, that led to life itself um so the great becoming to me is the closest translation that really gets to that Love it. Um, yeah yeah and so and and so to live in that stream um really that like how do you find that pathway where we're not in resistance and we're not in tension but we're in that becoming of ourselves, of our expression, of what we're here to, to do in this life, um, to contribute, to be, to this, you know, what's, what stream is ours um, in our own opening and blossoming. Hmm. Uh, I, I will say another, just a, a piece about how sacred sexuality does, does fit within Tantra. Um, yes. I often say that sexuality is to Tantra as sexuality is to humanity. Um, and what I mean by that is our sexuality is a deeply sacred and interwoven aspect of who we are as humans. Um, we can't separate it. It's how we got here. <laughs> It's how we got here and a lot of in, in a lot of ways it's it's one of the ways that we go home. It's one of the fastest ways we can go home within ourselves. Can you speak um, more to that? What do you mean by um, going home to yourself? I have I'm curious because um, that's a really beautiful thing to say that sexuality is how we get home to ourselves. So sexuality when it's in its pure state like an uninhibited really pure state kind of without agenda um, and it's just the that um, arising of our own life force energy within our body that kind of arousal where we just feel like whoa there I am um, and the tensions fall away the body becomes the primary um, the mind softens, the mind kind of falls back and maybe, maybe even rests in the heart. Um, and not because we asked it to, but just because we moved, we shifted into a different place of beingness when the sexual energy turned on. And there can become a softening. There can become a place where there's less words and there's more breath, um, and more sensation um, and an ability to be connected with the moment with ourselves with the moment if we're sharing if it's if it's the type of um if we're in our sexuality in a way that's being shared with another 
There can even be a merging that happens there. Um, but it's not just with the other. It's with self. It's with relaxation that's alive. Um, so it's this enlivened, relaxed state. And that that's the homecoming. Um, the senses are awake and the, the mind and body and spirit are merged. Um, and there's just a congruency throughout the system. When I hear what you're saying, it's almost like we return to a naturalness of all that we are. And I wonder how often we feel that throughout our day. And I know that this practice of Tantra has been one of the vehicles through which it, you know, when you say going home, that's what I think of is like a, this naturalness that comes about that has a quality of stillness, like you're saying, but wholeness. And there's nothing really to um, justify in being there or, but there's a full understanding of everything. Like there's a access to a lot more there. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's access to, to really all things um, and, and, and access to such ease from that place. And I, I, I really love um, how you said it's, I wonder how often we feel that throughout our day. Mm -hmm. um, because the sexuality is just one way. It's one, um, one medium that can take us there. Um, that kind of unlocks the pieces and sometimes pretty fast <laughs> and there's enjoyment and it, it's quite you know it's a, it's a lovely way to to experience that natural state and there's so many ways and is that um, what you mean by the pathway of liberation that you wanted to talk about as well today yeah yeah, and um, we're gonna we'll talk about that in a kind of a two step um, process because there's a piece, there's a cornerstone of Tantra that really must be talked about and is um, wonderful to talk about that comes as a step before liberation. <laughs> mm -hmm. So so we'll get to talk about the the interplay of of well I'll just give it of self awareness. Um, which is a kind of a cornerstone. It's almost like the landing room. If you're going to walk into the, to the world and the practice of Tantra, one of the first places you'll come to is self-awareness. Um, so we'll, we'll look at that. And what that, what is that? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a nice concept, um, but we'll, we'll go into it a little bit. And then the, and then how that can lead us to these really greater experiences of liberation. Beautiful. Okay, well, why don't we, shall we go there now? Jump in, let's do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, I, I do wanna just preface before we get started. Thank you so much, Stevens, for joining us. Um, I want to just say, you know, if you, this is being recorded. And so if you would like to stay anonymous, um, you can just stay as you are. And obviously we would love to hear from you. If you guys have questions or anything like that, feel free to post it in the chat and um, we can make ourselves available to answer questions throughout if it feels relevant in the moment and definitely at the end. And if you wish to stay anonymous, just keep your video off. But of course, we'd love to see you as well. Um, but yeah, let's jump into it. I'm so excited to hear what you have to say about this path. Okay. Um, so one of the pieces that that I found um, early on in my exploration with Tantra was a different kind of self-awareness. Um, the type of self-awareness that is really honest about where I am in, in this moment, um, what's in terms of what's going on with me? What do I have access to? What state of being am I sitting in? Um, what would I enjoy? What, what, what would I need in that moment? Um, and that piece that is about not how I want to feel, but how I feel, 
I'm not what I wish I needed or what I wish I'd like to be doing, mm -hmm. but what's really true, what, what's really true for me in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and with Tantra, there's this piece of rather than trying to kind of reach and create this kind of grand self-awareness that sums up all parts of me at one time. That it's, it was offered to me more as a process of moment by moment, what's true for me, what's happening for me in this moment, what's happening for me in this moment. And over time, yes, sometimes looking at the continuum and saying, huh, I seem to really thrive when this is in place. I seem to struggle or crash when this happens. Um, and so this, the place of self-awareness, um, what I, one of the examples I can use is I used to do a lot more. I used to have a lot more activity in my life. I used to um, commit to a lot more. And what I would find was um, I used to offer a lot more sessions in a week, for example. Um, I kind of would offer if I could fit it, if I could find a place on the schedule for it. And if there was a request, I would offer the session. Um, but what I found, if we just stay with that one, is there's a certain number of sessions in a given week. And it, it's not the exact number, but there's like, if I combine that with other factors where I feel the most accessed. Mm -hmm. And and I, rather than judging that or trying to even push that, just the acceptance, the awareness and the acceptance, oh, wow, that's where I thrive. When I have this many number of sessions, each one of them is so rich and I'm really able to come through and serve that, that client. I feel really, really accessed. And without pushing for sometimes we try to over understand um where the, <laughs> what, but but more just being aware for where the magic resides for me than trying to understand that or or change it um but to let myself rest and actually thrive in the in the conditions of life that really work for me um, and there's so many examples of this yeah, what I hear you saying is like you're you're searching for where is your yes about whatever it is. Where is yeah, where is my yes? And where um where can I continue to come through and feel vibrant? Um so this could pertain to how we're in relationship with friends, how we're in relationship with beloveds or partners, how we're in relationship with our children. Um, what are the ways that we're in relationship with others that really works for us? Um, rather than trying to fit pieces that, that we may just notice are disruptive for whatever reason, disruptive or disturbing or hard, right. um, painful, uh, create tension in our system. Um, but so having this self-awareness of what really works for you. Um, and then here's the key. Being willing to live that. Being willing to. Being willing to step in and to live what you learn about yourself, what you witness about yourself no matter how other people are doing it, mm -hmm. no matter what other people might think, and no matter what you've been told you should be. And having enough awareness to know what's yours and what's, what are those shoulds that we've accepted in our, in our belief system, I think has been my personal hardest part of the journey because it's, it's a thin line sometimes, I feel, you know, I've had many 
things come up for me where I really in the moment felt like I was yes. I mean, and what are our gauges for yes? Like how do we find that out in our body or what are our tools for finding yes? And I think that that has also evolved, um, you know, as I gained more and more awareness. But, you know, when I first started this practice, it was very much, um, I realized running on programs. Yeah. And it took me a long time to figure out, oh, that's a program. That, that's not even mine. And yeah. I, maybe you can give a full on example because I'm terrible at giving <laughs> examples. But, um, but yeah, I feel like that's a hard one to, to finally figure out sometimes. Yeah, and sometimes we might be saying yes to something because we really enjoy the feeling of being accepted mm-hmm. or we enjoy the feeling of remaining connected. Yeah. So we might put the, that need for connection above what really is our yes. Yeah, the cost benefit of being liked, which I love being liked. <laughs> it feels good to be liked. Right? <laughs> yeah, and or um, to not cause conflict sure. or discomfort. Sometimes it's, you know, we can know that we really don't enjoy that. And so we can put kind of that peacemaking. Um, if we have a value system around peacemaking, or maybe a passed down value system around peacemaking um, to in front of what's really true. And the interesting thing, I, I you started to speak to it when you said that I've seen that like sounds like that's evolved for you in terms of how you understand your yes over time. Mm -hmm. Um, Because oftentimes our our true yes might be buried a little bit beneath a couple needs or, you know, some some patterns um, or some ways that we've kind of the way the personality has formed Mm -hmm. um, to be received and um, viewed in the world. Um, So perhaps we want to talk about what you you mentioned the body and how it feels in the body. Um, Perhaps we want to feel we want to talk about what a true yes that's aligned with like, oh, what's really going on with you in any moment, what that feels like. I think that that would be a great tool. You know, everybody should know what their yes feels like in their body. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay. So this is what we're going to do to feel that because first we want to kind of start with a little bit of a, what I call like a current energetic state. Mm. Um, So the, for those that are um, joining us and tuning in, um, I'll invite you, this is just going to be a couple minutes. Um, and it has a big impact, uh, yet kind of small investment. So I'll say, you know, just try it out and go for it. <laughs> so I'll invite you to go ahead and stand up. Um, just stand two feet on the ground, um, about hip distance. Just keep your feet about hip distance apart. If it feels good, I like to close my eyes for this short practice. Um, and and then you're just gonna start to shake. Um, so with your standing, you can, you'll, you'll just let your knees become a kind of bouncy. Um, you can kind of see from, you can tell from Simone's movements, they're actually coming from her knees that are bouncing. Uh, so just really loose, natural, organic movement. What will happen is as the knees bounce, the rest of the body just naturally starts to shake. Uh, it's not forced. It might be small or medium or big in size. That's fine. Um, just let your inhales be a little bit deeper. Let your exhales be open mouth. Maybe let them be audible. So, Because there's going to be some energy that starts to move in the system. And you can let your breath go ahead and help release and move that energy. Really let your knees bounce and let the bouncing from the knees 
just produce this organic shaking running up the thighs, around the hips, waistline, belly, up the sides of the body, up the back body. Just a few more minutes here. Let the movements become a little bigger, if that feels good. Let the arms swing, shoulders are loose, and even let the shaking travel up the neck if you can. It it would be maybe a smaller movement as it travels up, but just letting that let it move all the way around, let it even create a washing around the cranium. Two <sighs> more breaths, deep inhale, open mouth, exhale. <sighs> let the wrists really shake out for this last couple breaths. And then in your own time, just let yourself come to stillness. If you're standing, remain standing. And just notice, just notice the shift. Notice where you feel an, an aliveness in the body. And then as you feel ready, you can take your seat again. Just bringing this, the shifts in, in state of being, bringing it with you to your seat. <sighs> I really love that. It's just such a simple exercise, but I always feel so much energy moving around when I really go for it, you know, like when I really commit to the shake, it's like, ah, oh, it's good. <laughs> what do you notice in your body after? I notice mostly how, well, I notice an overall activation that there's some tingling and warmth and more movement at the subtle la layer of my body and my awareness to that. Um, and how much tension I hold in my arms and my shoulders, and my hands. Um, because, yeah, it's just maybe because of what I do, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah, working with your hands and arms. and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's some stuff that lives in there. So <laughs> it's good to shake it out. So I love the shaking practice uh, be for many reasons. But one, it's a great way to get current. Um, when we shake, we're actually releasing the tensions that have accumulated in the body and we're creating pathways for uh, for kind of a free flow of current energy. Uh, we also, we're, we oxygenate the system and there's a freshness that can show up. Mm -hmm. uh, so when there's freshness, there's there's an, a sense of um, aliveness for, for me. Um, and that is one of the, I wanted to just kind of allow that, that shift, that like alive feeling, um, because that's a sign of a yes. Mm -hmm. um, so um, let's, sometimes we can think of our, uh, we'll spend, we're going to go into what yeses feel like. There's some commonalities in terms of what it feels like in most systems and then there's some like unique things some kind of nuanced things that will be unique for your system um and so we cannot but before we go into that work let's contrast it um with what are kind of the flags that were not in a yes um so i want you to think back to a time 
Maybe it doesn't have to be super heavy, uh, but just think back the most recent memory or the first one that pops into your head of when you went ahead with something that it became really clear later wasn't really your cup of tea. You know, wasn't what you, wasn't your full first choice um, or full yes. Maybe you accepted an invitation. Maybe you stayed in this scenario a little longer. Maybe you ordered something off the menu that ended up not being the, you know, what you really needed. Um, so just think of an easy one or the first one. It's okay if it, some big, big one comes into your mind, you can stay with that one too. And then I just want you to think about what, what was going on in your body at the time that the decision or indecision was made. Let's see if you can remember any of the sensations or any of the style of thoughts you were having. You might um, have found yourself considering different pieces. Um, you might have found yourself like considering, oh, well, if this, then that. You might have on the thought level found yourself considering uh, um, other what other people or what the scenario, um, so kind of what the situation needed. Um, you may or may not have been, fo uh, been folding yourself into that. Um, Sometimes when we consider what all the different parts, sometimes we include ourselves and sometimes we don't. So just if this, if this aspect was relevant to the scenario you're thinking of, just make a little note of if you included yourself in the considerations or not. Mm -hmm. um, you might have noticed some stiffness or tension in your body around the scenario. You might have noticed confusion kind of un, not knowing. Um, and sometimes when we're not sure, do I want this? Well, it, I, it seems like a nice invitation. Maybe I'll just go along with it. Maybe it'll turn out good. <laughs> there might've been some of that, like just mm -hmm. uncertainty. There might've been even a feeling of like frozen. Sometimes that can happen. like. Like, I just went blank, you know, just frozen. Anything else I haven't mentioned that was is true in the, the, the moment you were thinking of, Simone? Um, I really loved how you broke it down into the mental space and the, and the body space and um, maybe emotionally, like, you mm. know, you get angry at yourself or is it I don't know like is there an emotion that comes up too yeah oh, that's a good one um you could feel kind of a, like a sadness mm -hmm. um there could feel um a sense of uh almost anxiety mm -hmm. like a little bit of um unsettledness um there, there can also be the feeling of um, anger or even resentment. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's, I'll just give you a little clue. We're not going to go too far down that path, but if it's resentment, then this isn't the first time. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that there's been a, a kind of maybe overriding or misidentification of what your yes was. Mm -hmm. And it'd be related to the situation or person. Um, not And not always the person. It might just be, a patterning where the thread isn't the other, if there's another person involved, it may not be them. It may be more the scenario mm -hmm. has shown up again previously for you. If there's a resentment, then we know there's history. That's it. Those two things always go together. Um, cool. yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, there, the, the emotional state, um, anger, trepidation, a little sadness, um, flat, flattening. Mm -hmm. uh, like a lack of enthusiasm mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, so all of those things, and, and maybe just a couple, maybe maybe all of them, maybe some and not others, were, were likely there. Um, when we start to get in confusion, um, kind of a muddled state, we can, it, it's a, it's a fast indicator that, oh, something about this isn't in full alignment. I'm not sure what, and what can happen often is we'll like, I don't know what, I can't pinpoint it, so I'll go ahead anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I would consider a confusion almost like a stop sign um, because it just means that we're not fully clear yet, but something's out isn't in full alignment. Um, and it's okay not to know what it is. So slow down or pause, we don't need to know exactly why. We can go by the feeling that, oh, something here isn't fully alive for me. And I love how you say that because it gives permission for the pause, which I think in today's society, we're so trained to respond right away, to have a response, to act and do. And um, I know for myself, <clears throat> giving myself permission for the pause is, is huge because I do need more time often to, to make a decision. Um, and I don't give myself permission <laughs> to do that all the time. Yeah. Okay. So back to self-awareness. Yeah. It took me a few years to recognize that I have a, a relatively slow emotional processing system, mm -hmm. um, which I had a lot of judgment around because I think it's really cool when somebody knows right away. I think it's so cool. It's I, so cool. I'm like you. I'm like, how do I feel about this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so what I would feel was I'd feel like a hit in my body, in my energy, and I, it would drop. And I would, I could feel a heaviness show up, but I didn't know exactly what was, I didn't know the details. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't articulate out what it was that was like, whoa, that doesn't work for me. Um, I knew the feeling, but because I didn't have the content and couldn't articulate myself, I wouldn't always just like give the feeling the the honor that it deserves. Mm. And what I learned over the years is that, oh, I have a slow emotional processing center that just, there's a timeline. I shouldn't even call it slow. That in itself is a judgment. Mm. Um, but that I have a different timeline. Um, and what I also recognized was I have a value for understanding what I'm feeling before I act or communicate. So what I thought was slow was actually a multi-part process that I was kind of instinctively letting myself go through before speaking to whatever went wobbly or kooky. <laughs> and once I realized that, it gave me the tools to say, ooh, that doesn't feel good. I don't have all the information yet on why. I'm not sure I can translate it for you. Let's say another person's involved, um, but that doesn't feel good. And if, if let's say no one else is involved, still to myself, wow, I don't fully understand what just happened, but I know it doesn't feel good. And I'm gonna need to attend to this. I need to give it a little bit of space and shore up my borders a little bit and let this, cause I'm, I'm in a digestion mode. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of self-awareness prompted me to give myself space. Um, so, and I know I can't make a decision in that time. I know that I, it's not um, my yeses and nos around things would, could get mixed up. They could get tumbled around a bit. So it came to this place of like, oh, that's what that feels like when I'm in a, um, a digest, digesting something that didn't work. Mm. and need a little bit of time so I can figure out what's needed for myself. Um, yeah. How do you delineate, just going back to, you know, the fact that we can have so much programming around other, what we've learned is a yes and no within our system. 
how do you delineate or how would one gain awareness around what's yours and what's other? Part of it is the same feeling of what feels like a yes. Um, so when something is not ours, it will always have a feeling of heaviness, um, tends to be a little sticky. Um, I will preface it saying not all things that are sticky, like stickiness can mean a couple different things. Um, and one of the main things it can mean is that, oh, this isn't mine. Something's stuck on me. Mm -hmm. um, the nature of stickiness means two surfaces are making contact. <laughs> So there is another, there's something else that's coming in. Otherwise, there'd be nothing to stick to. Um, yeah. 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 So they can have a stickiness. Um, the movement can feel not so easy. Um, and it's because now you're wading through waters that aren't just yours. Um, can it also feel very fast as if, you haven't spent time in the moment of it, you know, because I feel like when I first started to gain this awareness and I realized I was playing a pattern, it was something I immediately agreed to or immediately, uh, you know, said yes or, or went into without really feeling for a yes or no. Yeah, you're, so you're speaking to brilliantly to like autopilot or reaction rather than response. And our reactions can be so patterned, like they're mm -hmm. just a, it's a patterned movement. Um, and by the way, it can be patterned thought too. Mm -hmm. we, our thoughts can run that where they're not, there's not a lot of intelligence being worked through the system. Mm -hmm. It's more of a, something happens, emotions too. Something happens, I immediately feel this way. Right. Something happens, I immediately correlate a belief with it, a meaning like, mm -hmm. and it doesn't, didn't filter through. There was no check-in, there was no, who, what? Like at least work it through the system, you know? So if it's not alive and current and it's a pattern either that you've put in place, um, cause sometimes we, we have to differentiate a little further from is that an old strategy that maybe Maybe I put it in place. Maybe it is mine. It's my strategy. And it was a darn good one 20 years ago. It served its time. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best I had then. And, but it's, it's not working anymore. And it needs an upgrade. Um, so it's not so much someone else's, but it's not current for me. Um, and then there's the other piece that is a hand-me-down. It is how I saw someone else do it, mm -hmm. or I was told to do it. Um, and those, but they all have that immediate kind of fast, um, kind of reacted movement to them where it wasn't worked through the system. We didn't do a tune in or a check in. Um, and it's usually very disconnected from the body. That's a good distinction. Yeah, I would say that was true for me. I would just like, and then later on, my body would be processing it. Yeah. Um, and, and just to kind of do a check-in, I don't even know how this time has passed, but we have 15 minutes left. <laughs> I saw so just a moment I, ago. I do want to um, at some point also open the, the uh, space for a question, but I would love for us to touch into the pathway to liberation and, and um, you know, self-awareness. Absolutely. This has been the app like cornerstone to what I would consider anywhere towards what liberation might be. <laughs> All right, let's dive in there for, for a few minutes. And, and then also, I'll just reiterate what you said. Um, questions, comments in the chat. Um, we, we will leave space to, to, for them. Um, even just raising your hand, if you want to say something, that's, really, really welcome to. Um, so, okay, so we've got, we, we've kind of started to unpack self-awareness. 
when we get to the place where we're willing to live it, we're willing to actually make our movements based on what's true for us, what's true and unique for us. We step into what's true liberation. Mm -hmm. um, and the piece here, what, from a tantric standpoint, liberation is when there is not something in the way of living your true nature. So it is freedom from that which gets in the way of living the true nature. That can be the past. That can be um, other people's suggestions. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that can be our own um, fear of not being received, welcomed. Um, How does this show up in one's lives? Like I would imagine if you're playing out these ways of not living a, a liberated life, it's hard to have a meaningful, deep partnership. It's hard to be in love with yourself. I would imagine there's like all these other things that start to manifest showing you, you know. You'll start to find that you're bumping up against the same things. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this piece of living, we do create the, our, our own worlds around us. Um, and sometimes we create our world around us just through complacency, mm -hmm. just from not making movements or not making choices. So I think it's important. Sometimes it can feel really hard to even ponder that for my own self if I'm really struggling in something, mm -hmm. to think that that I created this, that 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 can be said or thrown around and it, um, I think it's important to understand that sometimes, sometimes we allow things to stay in our world mm -hmm. just through non through through a complacency, where we're not we're not willing to make a movement that maybe deep down we know we need, but we don't want to move through the loss, mm -hmm. or we don't want to move through the pain, mm -hmm. or we don't want to cause the discomfort for ourselves or for someone else. And I would even speak to the fact that sometimes we don't believe that either we're worthy or that it's possible to have the thing on the other side of where we would wanna move. That's been my experience too. Yeah, absolutely. And so sometimes it's as simple as staying true to what you know about yourself, whether you understand it fully or not, <laughs> um, being compassionate and allowing your movements to truly represent what's what's true for you following your yeses even when you wish honoring the no even when you wish it was a yes because it would be convenient um, or it's a charted pathway to something that you feel more comfortable with but really coming into that place of like oh my yes is my navigation point even if it seems crazy <laughs> or inconvenient and then through that being the courage to live it, um, we start to experience liberation. Now, liberation doesn't mean pure bliss all the time. And it doesn't mean that we, we don't have painful moments or painful periods. Um, that's something that, it also doesn't mean it's not escapism. Um, that's a big thing. It's not escaping. Liberation is just, again, we're free. Um, from we allow the things that get in the way from living our true nature, uh, we, we release them. We allow them to fall off. And there's a piece about this that given the times we're living, we're living in, I think is important to differentiate. Oftentimes, um, it can be mistaken with fighting against what is. So fighting against um, a fighting against an institution or fighting against um, a rule or fighting against um, some situation that's going on, um, fighting against the mainstream, um, that's actually it falls into the realm of um, of fighting something. Liberation is living one's truth, living one's true path, 
finding a creative way to exist within whatever environment you're in. And there's this beautiful uh, piece around living on your own terms uh, by Osho. And he talks about how the rebel lives their own path. They're not fighting against anybody else's path. They're actually creating a new path based on who they are. And that, when we think about the rebel, I, I have kind of a, you know, I always try to keep in my inner council like this really enlightened rebel. Um, and, and it's always a reminder to myself that that rebel is just living liberated. They're not fighting against things. Um, and that's not to say that we don't advocate for certain things, but just to differentiate what liberation is. Yeah, I, I really also love that you're saying that it takes courage because what I find is when we don't know what we're moving towards, but we are making a movement, we're moving into the unknown. You know, I think that that's a huge step to be okay with you know, we may or may not like what's on in the unknown, <laughs> but we're going to do it anyway, because that's what's true. Or that's what's really inside of me feeling more aligned and more, um, more spacious, more, more congruent with myself. And that valuing that above the peacemaking and the, the knowingness of what has been is really powerful and truly does take a lot of courage. And so I'm glad that you said that word courage. Um, by the way, we had a comment, uh, Stephen said, especially like the shaking exercise, which allowed self-awareness in the moment, which is needed. Thank you, which is awesome. That's great. That's a great one anytime. Simone, I think we'd be um, remiss if we didn't spend just a moment making sure we talked about the body sensations around yes, Mm -hmm. um, which you just, you nailed it. You said congruency with self. Yeah. Um, so that's where our yeses are. It's when we're in full congruency with self, when the kind of movement or choice in front of us is, is in congruency. Um, so I'll, I'll do the speed version, um, <laughs> lightness, not a lot of mental activity, mm. um, a natural, like you're almost already doing it like it's it's like oh yeah let's get going kind of the, there's that movement to it yeah um for me i get i, I mentioned summer what we're going to find in all people um lightness a willingness to just get going with it um a, a expansiveness there's usually a softness a relaxation in the body and it's that coupled like Ooh, I'm relaxed and I'm, re and I'm alive. Um, and then for, for me, I'll give an example of a very personal thing. I get a very tingly sensation right on the top of my thighs. It's just the way it shows up. <laughs> <I'm master. laughs> yeah, so for someone, it might be across their chest. It might be, um, up here. It, you know, might it might be in their heart. Maybe they feel their heart widen a little. In your mind, when I've worked in shamanic spaces, my body will actually lean forward. Yeah. When I'm a yes. And when I'm a no, I feel a crunching in my stomach. Like it's very clear, my yes and no. Yeah, there, there's this body movement about a pulling in and back away versus like a, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a natural movement. You can actually, by the way, you can watch somebody else mm. and you can recognize their body will show the yes. Yeah. Um, even if their words are showing something a little bit more complicated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Jen, I want to just um, thank you so much. <laughs> it's been such a really great conversation to have. And I think such a poignant one. And you, you speak to it with a mastery of words that really helps me understand and, and appreciate this practice so much. And I, I value your wisdom and your friendship and thank you so, so much. I wanna also take a few moments um, 
to share with everyone how to get in touch with you and continue to work with you if they're interested. You have a website, it's shunyagates.com and it's S-H-U-N-Y-A gates.com. I put it in the chat for everyone as well. And um, you've been so gracious in offering us a special for source people and uh, for one-on-ones, you're willing to do a $95 session or a three package, uh, 60 minute sessions for 265 if they just mention that they're a source client. And this is good for 30 days from right now, I believe is what you said. Yes. So jump on it people, cause it ain't lasting. Um, <laughs> but of course, Jen is around all the time. Um, and, um, just to thank the people that uh, jumped on, they jumped off, but <laughs> we did get some thank yous. And so if they do have questions, I believe that you have a way to contact you through your website as well. Is that correct? I do. And I also have an email. It's just Jen at Shuny Gates. So J-E-N at Shuny Gates .com. Um, And then some of the questions, Simone, that you asked around, you know, how do you differentiate what's yours, what's, what's not? How do you... A lot that we glazed over. That's really what tantric counseling does. Yeah. It gives us an opportunity um, to take what's going on in our life at any given moment, and that's at the actual material mm -hmm. to unfold into these um, deeper ways of of being, and to find we use the material of our own lives to make movements towards experiencing more liberation. Uh, I guess that's my final question while we have a few more minutes is, you know, for anybody who hasn't experienced Tantra, because I know we kind of went at it and, and so fast, I mean, an hour is already gone. And I feel like, you know, we just glazed over what is Tantra and gave people a very heady, well, not very heady, but just, it was mostly a conceptual, like, this is what Tantra is and how we can apply it. But if they were to come to a session with you, what would that look like? Or how, what would they expect to experience with you? So um, if they were to come for a session, the, the invitation would be to bring something to work with from their life. So mm -hmm. somewhere where they could use a little bit more support um, or they'd like to enhance their experience of something. Mm -hmm. And then um, in session work, we're able to unfold it through um, exploration, through you know, working with it, um, unfolding the pieces of it. Um, and, and that is done through some talking, um, but then it's, we're also able to do some um, energy work and even work with the body, some esoteric body work so that we're not just talking about it, but we're actually working it through on other layers and we're inviting the shifts on those somatic and energetic layers. And that would look like maybe some breath work too, or kind of exploring like where does this live in your body? And yeah, you know, um, exactly. And then, um, and then when I say energy work, really what I mean is inviting the body to let go of certain tension points um, and come into some more fluidity um, where it's needed. Um, it's really, you know, kind of body driven based on the, the person. Um, and it can also, sessions can also, um, really look like me offering tools that not only do you use in session to get acquainted with them and to feel the benefit, but then you take them with you. Um, so that as things are coming up, you become more equipped and, and you have what you need to, to enhance the experience of your day-to-day -day life quickly. You're not needing to wait or rely on someone else or session work, but you, you really get to take things home that you can retain for yourself. It, it is huge. I mean, I will speak for myself how Tantra has changed my life. And um, it's exactly that, that you get these tools that you can use in real time. And living in real time is where life is. <laughs> we forget, I think sometimes, I forget. Um, and so to me, that's such a blessing. And um, Again, thank you so, so much, Jen. It's been a beautiful hour with you. I'm going to um, say goodbye to all our lovely friends who have joined us and we'll watch this replay. And again, check out Jen at shunyagates.com. 
S H U N Y A G A T E S dot com. And we will see you at the next Healers Wisdom Trade Show. Stay tuned. Jen, be well. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Simone. Thank you.